Hey guys, what's up? So welcome to TriVision. Today we're gonna to be talking about muzzle flashes. And also we're gonna be talking about how to make some explosions. Let's get it. Okay, hey guys, so as y'all saw in the intro, um, today we're gonna be looking into how to make muzzle flashes or explosions and putting those into your videos. So this is actually fairly simple at first, but you can make this extremely complicated if you put a bunch of detail into it. So I'm gonna kind of show you all the middle grounds with the simple side being with the muzzle flashes and then a little bit more complicated being with the explosions. But right now I'm in Premiere. And what I have is I have brought in all my assets and I've rendered them all together and just put them over into an After Effects composition. So I'll show you what all assets I have. So I'm going to jump over into After Effects right now so we can start to look at all of these. Okay, so here we are and we've got just all of our basic stuff. So what I have is I have my footage down here at the bottom and then I've found these certain frames where I want it to look like the gun is firing off. So the point of me putting my assets into Premiere and then bringing them into After Effects is because I went through these videos that I downloaded on or off of YouTube that are just free stock footage of explosions and stuff. And then we've got some muzzle flashes like here. So I just downloaded those and then I I took those videos into Premiere and I just clipped out the different muzzle flashes that I liked the best. So I have these muzzle flashes here and I'm going to um, press F F4 and just show y'all kind of what it, what it looked like whenever I got to all of them. So whenever you get them you've got these different different muzzle flashes and they're all on a black screen but how you're able to make these come alive and actually look like gunfire in your videos you got to key out this black so i take all of all of these muzzle flashes and i'm going to set them to screen so whenever you first get them they're going to be they're going to be all out of scale and they're not going to be to position so i'm going to come in here and let's see so I want to just select this first clip that I'm looking at. So I'm going to just scale it down until it looks right. Whenever I was making the original video, I think I settled most of these at around 25 to 30% scale. And then also you see, you can see it just for a little bit here, there's also some smoke residue that comes off which whenever this is playing at high speed, um, you can see it kind of up here as well. Whenever this is playing through, I think that really adds a lot to it. Okay, so let me just do one more just for the sake of showing y'all. So we've got this other muzzle flash right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take it down to 25 because I know that's probably where it's gonna be. And then, let's see, just put it right there. So then whenever it goes through, you've got, you've got pretty convincing whenever it plays through at high speed. And then you've got me over here shaking like a fool, trying to act like there's recoil. Um, I'm, not an, I'm not an actor. So I'm just going to go ahead and set these back to, let's say 25. So scale, 25. So the muzzle flash, I think, here is the prime example of using a screen in order just to make this black go out. And I think the muzzle flashes, since they only last for a couple seconds, those are extremely easy to do. But then you do some more complicated stuff, like the explosion. So I'm going to pull up the After Effects project for that. Okay, so here we are um, with a different composition that I have for the explosion and this one is much more complicated so I'm just gonna break it down into just the different layers of kind of 
kind of what we did with the muzzle flash because to an extent they are they are the same so these four layers I'm going to highlight right here all of these are all explosion layers so you can see if we solo different ones that they all they all look a little bit different in their own ways but my main thing here was that if you're going to have a big fireball I wanted to use as many layers as possible in order to kind of show the intensity of that. So whenever you start off, I purposely had this this one video that makes it come and look like it's like shooting out sparks out the front and then it gradually gets more towards the back of the truck. And I know that this is really dramatic. This is never going to happen in real life. And then it just slowly fades out. So like we did with the with the muzzle flashes for these I want to set um, I want to set all of those to screen I did a couple more things so as y'all can see here I threw the grenade behind my truck because I feel like whenever you're doing anything with visual effects you can always heighten the quality of your effect if you're able to make it interact with something in your actual footage so here I decided to make it interact with my truck and I did that through creating a duplication of the original footage and I brought it up to the top so that it would um so that it would just be a mask of the truck so whenever I turn this on I just cut it out so that whenever you place this this truck on top it makes it look a little bit more like the fires behind it and it's not convincing at all because the truck still isn't interacting with the fire um, there's not any light. You can see that whenever I'm walking over here that the truck is still on top. So just real quick, in order to fix this problem, what I did is I duplicated the original footage again and I rotoscoped myself frame by frame. And this is super rough. The main thing that I wanted to, to worry about here was I just wanted to make sure that the section of the gun and my body that was over the truck that I could place that on t on top of all the other footage so that it wouldn't be that like my body was cut out as you see it there. So now that we've got basically all the essentials, we've got the fire and then we've got the things that are in the foreground in front of the fire. Now this is where you can start to do the detail work that starts to make your explosion look actually a little bit realistic. I'm going to start from the top here. So I've added a bunch of just different colored layers that whenever you turn these on they highlight certain spots of the explosion. So I'm going to fast forward here. Okay so here's a perfect frame for it. If I toggle this on and off you can see that I created a mask just around the top of the truck here and I feathered it a lot just to make it look like the light from the explosion was so intense that it started leaking over onto the top of the truck here. And then I did the exact same thing with another another mask here at the bottom that was supposed to show the intensity here at the bottom. And whenever you start to do that, then it looks like the truck and the fire or the explosion are actually in the same environment and there's actually a little bit of interaction in between them. So I was able to just bring up the opacity whenever the fire actually gets to a point where it would start to create this distortion and whenever you bring that up with the fire then it it's just one more thing that tricks your brain into thinking that okay these these two things the explosion and the truck are actually in the same environment together. Let's see this one this one was just another general mask that I turned on in behind the truck mask because this one I wanted you to be able to see it all around a little bit on the trees and stuff and I made this one a, a little bit more of a burnt orange. Just again, it creates more of that intense heat feeling and I was able to feather that one up a bunch. And then my last effect here, I think this is the one that really sells it. So I created an adjustment layer and I put it down and underneath all of the explosions except for one. And this one that I, that I put the adjustment layer on top of is the biggest explosion. 
But I created this adjustment layer and I threw on the effect Turbulent Displace on top of it. And basically what Turbulent Displace does is it creates that, that like gassy distortion that you see that's on top of any fire. And it creates that distortion in a way. So I just cranked up the amount to about 33, 32. And I also had to bring down the size. I think the size started out at around 100 because I wanted it to look like it was further off. So of course, that's whenever the turbulence is going to be smaller. And then I just keyframed it so that from the beginning of the layer to the end, it goes about six rotations. So you're able to get this really warped look up here as the time goes by. So whenever you have all of these things together, I bring it back into Premiere and throw in a color grade. Let's get it. You're able to create a, a pretty convincing effect. So then the last thing you can see here in Premiere that the frame is actually shaking around a little bit. So that's because I composed everything together. And all I did is I just created a bunch of kind of periodic keyframes throughout where I was just shifting around the frame just a little bit. So if you all see like here I made bring this one up, put it like that, just so that it creates motion from going one to the other. And then I, I highlighted all of them and pressed F9 in order to make those frames an easy ease. So now that we look at everything in conjunction, so we've got the, the camera shape just to kind of mesh everything together. So you've got these muzzle flashes and you put sound effects and it just helps sell it even more. And then you've got these explosions here. And whenever you're able to put everything together, it just all kind of meshes because it happens so quickly that your brain is kind of overwhelmed with what all is going on. But the thing that's crazy about this is that doing all of this explosion is all 100% completely free. And whenever I was first messing around with seeing how I would make it, it probably only took me an hour or two to do the muzzle flashes and the explosion as well. So it's a really, really intuitive process. But yeah, so guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope y'all enjoyed this and I hope that this was a help to some of y'all. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, y'all just hit the button down low and um, also click the notification bell so that whenever there's any new updates, y'all be the first to know about it. Also, if y'all don't follow us on Instagram, um, go over to trivision underscore productions. And if there's any new projects coming up, we'll normally post some teasers about it. But besides that, thank y'all for watching. The next video will be out on Friday, and we're going to be talking about the progress that I've made as a filmmaker, and then why keeping up with your progress is a good thing. Thank y'all for watching. <laughs>